Right now, let's get to synthetic division, a very necessary skill. All right, let's look at what this says. I'm going to scroll up. We're being asked to find the quotient and the remainder and notice that I included the answers. But they'll come later. Right now we have to figure out how they got the answers. All right, what this says is we have a polynomial, x to the third, minus 2x squared, minus 9. And we're dividing it by x plus 2. Or another way of saying this is x plus 2 divided into x to the third minus 2x squared minus 9. Let's talk about how we would do this. We're not going to use long division, and we're not going to use factoring and cancellation. This is what we're going to do. We're going to look at this polynomial in the numerator or the polynomial in what's called the dividend, x to the third minus 2x squared minus nine, and talk about polynomials and talk about the way we write them. We write them in descending order by powers. And this is written correctly, but also notice that if we were going to do this generally, just a general form, we would have a number times x to the third plus a number times x squared plus a number times x plus a number at the end, the constant. Well, we have that here. There's an understood one in front of x to the third, and there's a negative two in front of x squared, and we have a negative nine at the end, but we do not have an x to the one power called the linear term. What to do? Well, we're supposed to have something there. So, but, but I can't be changing the value of that polynomial. So what I'm going to do is this, I'm going to put a temporary placeholder in right here. Now I can account for all four terms. The cubic term, the quadratic term, the linear term, and the constant term. Also, just by way of review, because it will help you, this is degree three. The cubic term is degree three. The quadratic term is degree two. The linear term is degree one. And the constant term is degree zero. We have to be able to account for all our degrees. Three, two, one, zero. And now we have. Because we're going to have to list the coefficients, just like we did with matrices. Remember that? I know you loved it. 
1, negative 2, 0, and negative 9. All right, now that's the first part. Here's the second part. We're dividing by x plus 2. There's another step that's very important. So I'm going to erase this temporarily. We'll rewrite it, don't worry. Because another, another step. All right, here's the first step. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you have all of your terms accounted for. But when you don't, you have to do this. Then I have to look at the binomial, the, the linear binomial that I'm dividing by, x plus 2. I have to set it equal to 0 and solve for x. So I have x plus 2 equals 0, and I'll subtract 2 from both sides of this little equation. 2 minus 2 is 0, and I'll be left with x equals negative 2. That's absolutely important totally important when you have a problem like this. All right, now I am ready to do synthetic division. I'm going to write down negative two. And then I'm going to write a kind of a backwards L or the lower half of a box. Then I'm going to write the coefficients of the dividend. One, negative two, zero, and negative nine. And then I'm going to skip a line and draw an equals two bar. because I'm going to be adding. And that's not too hard usually. Adding and multiplying, adding and multiplying, adding and multiplying, as you'll see. The first step is always to bring whatever that number is directly down. One. Now, I multiply this number, 1, times negative 2, and I write it here. And then I add these two numbers together. Negative 2 times negative 2 is negative, it's not times, plus negative 2 is negative 4. Yes, negative 2 times negative 2 would be positive 4, but we're adding. OK, so negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. Now I multiply. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. And now I add vertically. 0 plus 8 is 8. See how this works? Now I multiply positive 8 times negative 2, and that will be negative 16. I add vertically, and my last number is negative 25. Now, I'm going to draw an interesting little shape. It's a dashed lower half of a box going the other way from there. And I'm done. Now, done with what? Okay, 
this was the coefficient of, let me change the color, the coefficient of x to the third, and the powers go downhill, x to the second, x to the one, and negative nine. With understood plus signs in between. So, I mean, you can imagine a plus and a plus and a plus. All right, now notice that I have completed one synthetic division, one complete synthetic division. And that's all I have to do because we're being asked now, what is the quotient and what is the remainder? Let's, let's talk about that. Remember that another way to write the problem was x plus two into and if we were doing long division, we would also have to put in a linear placeholder, x to the third minus 2x squared plus 0x minus 9. The answer we would have gotten would have been up here, the quotient. And then we would have written a lot of stuff down here and the number number we end up with, which according to this is negative 25, is the remainder. Now let's do this with numbers and it will be more familiar to you. Two divided into seven. Two will go into seven, not evenly, but it will go three times because three times two is six. I subtract seven minus six and I get a one. This is the quotient. This is the remainder. We have just found the quotient. And this is the remainder. But there is a little more to it than that, of course. Once you do a complete synthetic division, the degree of this first of the leading term, if you will, drops to being the coefficient of x squared. Drops by one. The degree of the polynomial drops by one. So now this is one x squared plus negative four x plus eight. That's my quotient. And I'm going to write that in a more normal way. We don't leave it plus minus. This is going to be x squared minus 4x plus 8. And the remainder is negative 25. Let's see. Yes, we agree. Your quotient is x squared minus 4x plus 8 and your remainder is negative 25. Ta-da! We have done synthetic division. Why? Well, you've got to trust me. You're going to find out why. Let's do it again. It's not the same problem, is it? X to the third minus 2x squared minus 9 x to the third minus 3x squared minus 4. We've still got an x plus 2. Oh, well, you can't win them all, can you? Okay, I am going to step one. 
write this as 1x to the third minus 3x squared plus 0x minus 4. And then again, I can come over here. We already know the answer to this one because we already did it. X plus two equals zero. Subtract two from both sides. In other words, I'm solving for X. X equals negative two. So three. We're going to do synthetic division. Negative 2, 1, negative 3, 0, negative 4. Um, get that out of the way so that I can check out and see if that gives me a black line. There's been an update and I'm not sure I like it as much. We're having little problems over here showing everything. What is that plus for? Well, whatever. Okay, now, I take this number and I bring it directly down. I multiply one times negative two, or whatever that number is, I multiply by my number in the backwards L. One times negative two is negative two. Negative three plus negative two is negative five. Negative five times negative two is positive 10. 0 plus 10 is 10. 10 times negative 2 is negative 20. And our last number is the remainder. Now this one up here was the coefficient of x to the third. So this one down here will be the coefficient of x to the second, which is squared. And then I write downhill. This is x to the one plus 10. And that is my quotient. My quotient is x squared minus five x plus 10. And my remainder is negative 24. Now, let's see if my math lab agrees. And there we go. See, this isn't really all that hard. You just have to make sure that all of your terms coming down from the leading term are accounted for. You'll get the hang of this really quickly and you'll wonder why you ever had to do any other kind of division. Well, you do. You can only do this when you've got a binomial factor. And that's it. There's no justice. What can I say? Ooh, here we go. Look at this, all of the terms are accounted for. So I can skip step one. Here we have X plus four. X plus four equals zero. I solve for X, so minus four, minus four. 4 minus 4 is 0, so I'm left with x on the left and negative 4 on the right. x 
equals negative four. So I jump right to step three. This was step two. This was step three, or will be. Two is the coefficient of the, well, it's the leading coefficient, isn't it? And 12 is the coefficient of x squared. And 14 is the coefficient of x. And negative 15 is the, co is, is the constant at the end. And now I'm going to do just what I did before. Draw a line. I have to cheat a little bit because my lines are so wiggly. I bring the two, uh-oh, never mind, back up, hold my horses. Well, what can I do so I don't have to copy everything over? Let me just move the three, yeah, yeah. And what have I got? Negative four, negative four. I'll cheat a little bit, come on. You can't cheat, I'll cheat. Here we go. Bring your two directly down. Two times negative four is negative eight. 12 plus negative eight, I mean, technically we have to add but really 12 plus negative eight is just 12 minus eight, which is four. Four times negative four is negative 16. 14 plus negative 16 is negative two. Negative two times negative four is positive eight. Negative 15 plus positive eight is negative seven. And so, this was x to the third, this becomes x squared plus x minus two, that's our quotient, and this is our remainder. So this is the quotient. And this is the remainder. Let's see if we're... Oh, I didn't write down the answers. We're just gonna have to assume it's right. Let's do it again. Woo! Write down the quotient and the remainder. Oh, I did write down the answers here. I didn't do it here? Well, darn. Imagine that. All right. Ah, now we're gonna have a step one. The highest degree is five. So we're going to have a number times x to the fifth plus a number times x to the fourth plus a number times x to the third plus a number times x to the second plus a number times x to the one. And I need to move this over. Plus a number. A constant. Want to know a secret? There is an x there. It's x to the zero. But we don't tell anybody about that because it would freak them out. So don't you freak out. There you go. 
You don't have to know it, so pretend you don't. All right, now looking up here, there's a one in front of X to the five. There's a one in front of X to the three, kind of curly. Um, and there's a minus one at the end. All the rest of the coefficients are going to be zero. Look at that. This is our step three. Step one. Now, step two, we've got to take care of X minus four. X minus four equals zero. I'm going to add four to both sides of the equation. Since negative four plus four is zero, I'll be left with an X on the left and a positive four on the right. And now I am ready to do synthetic division on this monster. I'll put four in the backward cell and then carefully write all the coefficients. One, zero, one, zero, zero, negative one. Kind of like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Okay. And we begin. Bring down, let, let me make sure I got this right. One, zero, one, zero, zero, negative one. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. Just making sure. Bring down the one. Whoop. Psh. All right. One times four is four. Zero plus four is four. Four times four is 16. One plus 16 is 17. 17 times four, hmm. Is 68. That's a big number. Zero plus 68 is 68. I didn't put my plus sign here. 68 times 4, oh dear, okay. 4 times 8 is 32, carry the 3. 4 times 6 is 24, plus 3 is 27. Oh, good grief. 272. 0 plus 272 is 272. 272 times 4. Four times two is eight. Four times seven is 28. Four times two is eight plus two is 10. Oh, good grief. Oh, up here, one, zero, eight, eight. Now, Negative one plus, ah, heck, 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 heck. What I do? Negative one plus 
There it is. It switched sides. Go back. There. Now, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted. Negative 1 plus 1088 is 1087. So I'll put a little dashed line around that. And since this was 1x to the fifth, this will be 1x to the 4th plus 4x to the 3rd plus 17x squared plus 68x plus 272. And here's our remainder. And this is the quotient. One X to the fourth, plus four X to the third, plus 17 X squared, plus 68 X, plus 272 is indeed the quotient. And 1087 is the remainder. We have done, or and you have been introduced to, synthetic division. Talk to you later.